Beautiful Stories vignettes. And this one is called Pigeon Pie. Has anyone here been to Morocco? Yes. yes. Yeah, have you had pigeon pie in Morocco? Yes. <laughs> okay, it's the national dish. Tastes a bit like chicken. <laughs> anyway, pigeon pie. Moroccan pigeon pie is a sumptuous spiced poultry pie using swab pigeons enriched with ground almonds, sugar, and cinnamon encased in crispy phyllo pastry. As a discerning individual, when Abdesamad, the son of the restaurant Gouda Meknes owner, invited me to sample his mother's pastilla, I salivated just thinking about the taste. I was in Morocco, having been invited to a traditional wedding by the bride herself. Jihan, I had met briefly in Antalya, Turkey, on holiday with her mother. Born in France, Jihan lived in Saint-Tropez, but her religious Muslim mother came from Meknes and still wore the veil. When I asked her if she had a boyfriend, she told me she was getting married in November. I wished her good luck, and surprisingly, she invited me, a complete stranger, to her wedding in Meknes. I go where I'm called in life and believe in happenstance. I announced I would come. She was a lovely person and I love fascinating Morocco, having been there twice before. Back in Brighton, I began researching Riyadh's in the imperial cities of Meknes and Fez and got very excited visually in my, visualizing in my mind the Medina, with its colorful souks, filled with handwoven textiles, kaftans, and Berber jewelry. This is Berber, by the way. Put it on specially. I discovered the charming traditional Riyadh Ritage in Meknes on the internet, and immediately became friendly with the owners, Saeed, his younger brother, Omar, and adorable sister Salma on arrival. Omar wanted to buy me a kaftan for the wedding and take me shopping in the nearby souk. Not wanting to tell him I'd already got a suitable hand embroidered kaftan from Fez, I told him I admired Berber jewelry. However, I did fall in love with a traditional Berber orange necklace and he was happy to present it to me to commemorate my, my visit to Meknes, the magnificent imperial city. Today, I wear it with pride and think fondly of his generosity. After the glorious wedding, where the ravishing bride, Jihan, changed her bejeweled gowns five times, I stayed on a few extra nights. Although, uh, through the Riyadh, I was introduced to a French-speaking guide who escorted me not only to the souk but to the ancient rundown synagogue uh, and abandoned cemetery. Back in the intriguing Medina with its labyrinth of alleyways, the guide inveigled me into an antique shop filled with wondrous tempting Berber jewelry. I desisted so he then lured me, obviously on a commission, to the adjoining Gouda Meknes restaurant for a mint tea. On entering, his friend, Abdesamad Bezineb, grabbed my hand and boldly kissed it with his lips touching my fingers. Not too many men have kissed my hand and usually slobber, but I had, I find it delightful and old fashioned. Nevertheless, however, he lingered, he lingered a fraction of a second too long, squeezing my fingers and gazing into my eyes with a leering smile. I knew what was on his mind, lust. 
He then invited me to sit down on the back wall sofa, propped up with sumptuous colorful cushions, presenting his visiting card, and called one of his staff to bring mint tea for both of us. My guide tactfully vanished on cue, and I was alone with this young frisky puppy. He gazed into my eyes, saying, I must come back on Monday to taste his mother's wondrous pigeon pie. How could I resist such an invitation? It was clear that it was a seductive invitation, especially when he told me he was attracted to older women and quite naturally asked my age. Mon Dieu, or should I say, Allah. Looking for a foreign sugar mummy, no doubt. Tea was poured from a height to aerate it from a traditional silver-plated pot into enameled glasses perched on metal saucers. I told him about Sheehan's wedding, but he seemed more interested in telling me about an older Italian lady in her 50s who came from Rome to visit every year for her erotic pleasure with him. <laughs> he then gave me the menu of what he provided back and front, in and out, up and down, et al. Then he fished out of his hand-tooled leather wallet a photo of the poor defenseless, headless, naked woman in the shower, full frontal with her abundant dark pubes. A sight to behold without her knowledge and permission for sure. My guide came back and we agreed I would return for the promised pastilla on Monday, the next day. However, on Monday I had other fish to fry with my guide, and so he escorted me back to the restaurant on Tuesday, especially for the promised complimentary pie. When it finally arrived, all alone on a large, decorative, beautiful ceramic plate without any vegetables, I tucked in with gustatory anticipation, but it wasn't good. In fact, I only ate half, saying I'd had a large breakfast in the Riyadh and was not very hungry. Perhaps it had been made Monday and served up on Tuesday. Young Abessamad was nowhere to be found when the bill came on a silver-plated platter. A bill? I was most indignant and insisted I had been invited. Abdesamad was in the antique shop, probably hiding from me, knowing that his pie investment had not <laughs> yielded growth. I complained about being given a bill, especially as he knew I was a senior trip advisor in uh, reviewer and would be reviewing his restaurant. He mumbled he'd invited me on Monday and not Tuesday, and the bill must have been in error. But my guide dragged me away at the pivotal moment. Did youthful Abessamad really think he was going to get me into the shower? For a pastilla? Allah. <laughs> <laughs>